Hey guys and welcome back to a new episode of Philips Android News. This time for August's episode, I will summarize those news that affect us Android developers from June and July because I actually skipped one episode since in June there just weren't that many changes that justified making a dedicated video. So this video I will summarize everything that happened to Android development and is relevant to be talked about from June and July. And the first cool change is that Android Studio Koala is now out. So a new stable Android Studio version. And I will now go over the changes. So in and of itself, this Koala Android Studio does not bring a lot of new changes, but it includes a new IntelliJ platform update. And that platform update, which is now integrated into Android Studio, comes with a lot of new cool changes. Since I think every of these typical JetBrains IDEs is just based on a core set of functionalities from IntelliJ. And the first thing that we can now do with this new platform update is using the Kotlin K2 compiler. So if you've missed that, that is just the new Kotlin compiler. That is a lot faster than the previous compiler. And you can now opt into that in Android Studio by opening your settings, going to languages and frameworks, and then Kotlin. Here we can enable this uh, Kotlin K2 mode which is still an alpha. I've turned this on, I've tried it out. Uh, it broke my syntax highlighting in Android Studio, but maybe that's just me. Try it out and, and see if it brings any uh, performance gains and, and just faster compilation for you. But be aware that it's still an alpha. Another cool thing this new IntelliJ platform update brings is just a more modern terminal. And if you go to your Android Studio settings again, type in terminal here and then you need to also opt into this which is in beta but that worked a lot better for me so just tick this box restart your ide and then you will notice that if you launch this terminal that it just looks a lot nicer it also has syntax highlighting which it didn't have previously and here you could then type any type of terminal command and each single command is then kind of separated or it's in it's in its own section as you can see which keeps things a lot clearer you have things like auto completion here in the terminal so LS, you can see all those terminal commands that I could uh, type here. I don't know, to list my current uh, processes here. So as you can see, that's a lot more readable. We can also uh, copy these individual blocks. Uh, so it's a much more user-friendly terminal. Uh, which I think is actually my favorite change of this new platform update. Another cool change is that code highlighting and just code completion already work during indexing. So I'm pretty sure you know this. You open your IDE and the first thing Android Studio does is it indexes all your dependencies. So it goes through all the dependencies you've included in your project, processes these, so it can also um, just um, quickly highlight these in your source code. And this platform update now allows you to already start working in your code even when Android Studio is still indexing these dependencies. So you can just get started coding a little bit earlier. Next up, the Android Studio Git integration got a lot of cool new changes. So on the one hand, if you are reviewing a pull request inside of Android Studio, then now the communication between the author of the pull request and those people who reviewed is now just much better. So you can comment, you can reply to comments, and author and reviewers can just... Uh, communicate inside of a PR inside of Android Studio. And that also includes things like reacting to comments, things like that you're now able to see the results of your CI builds much more easily in Android Studio. So with a check or a cross, whether that CI build passed or failed, and just some more minor improvements regarding the Git integration as a whole. And another very cool change is that we now got inline breakpoints. So if you're a fan of debugging, you will love this change. Let's take a look at what this is. So if we have something like this, we have uh, maybe some kind of list maybe a list of unit just as a demo here. And we then loop over that list and we would just print each individual item. If we now want to debug that code and maybe just make our code or the debugger stop with every single call of the print line statement, then that wouldn't be possible right now. Because so far we could only set breakpoints for a whole line and the debugger then can't know whether we want to make it break for this for each expression. So before the code jumps into this for each loop, or if it should uh, stop for every single print line expression. But now with these new inline breakpoints, we can do exactly that to mark this as a breakpoint. And then uh, the IDE will highlight where we can also set individual breakpoints. So if we want this to also stop here, so for the for each block and for each print line statement individually, we can set multiple breakpoints per line. And we can also toggle this one off and then uh, the debugger will only stop for every single print on statement, but not before jumping into this for each block. All right, now coming to the more Android Studio specific changes that weren't part of the IntelliJ platform update, but just of the normal Android Studio Koala update. And as I said, there aren't that many, but some of them are pretty cool. One of them is that we can now have a split view for the running devices tab. So I opened this little crypto tracker app, which by the way, you can also stay tuned because you will soon get something about this. Will be free, but won't be on YouTube. So just 
follow my content and you will soon find out how you can learn to build this cool app here with a graph tracking these different crypto coins. But so far, if we have such an app and we have our running devices tab open inside of Android Studio, and then we can have multiple tabs for each single device we launched our app on. So here, our Pixel 6, for example, or if we launch it on a tablet device, then we also have this here. And if we then need to somehow compare these different apps on different devices, we always need to switch here. But now with this new update, what we can do is we can right click here and then split and move right, for example. And then we will have both these devices here next to each other, which I think is pretty useful. All right, one last change regarding Android Studio, and that is that we now have a new starter template for the Gemini AI. So that's kind of Google's version of ChatGPT, which you can now directly integrate into your app. So if you have any AI functionality, you just want to quickly integrate, you don't want to write your own solution, you don't want to include your own models, and then you can use Google's ready-made Gemini framework. And for that, you already now have a starter template. So that means if you create a new product here under file, a new project, and then we have this Gemini API starter here. I also went over that uh, in the video where I tested this new AI, but now this template is included in the stable version of Android Studio. All right, so much about Android Studio. What else is important to talk about? What is definitely important to talk about is the new Android version 15. Because over the past six months, roughly, Google always announced a new release of this version. So first um, developer preview, second developer preview, uh, then the beta 1, beta 2, beta 3, beta 4. And now in the past two months, beta 3 and beta 4 came out for Android 15, so that we now know that this Android version is feature complete, so we know exactly what kind of new stuff it will bring also for us developers. But for beta 3 and 4, there actually aren't that many new things. On the one hand, it's just that the uh, credential manager, so how we can authenticate for a specific service, just has a little bit of a better UX now. So um, before we had to go through uh, two steps, and now the sign-in prompt only needs a single step in order to authenticate. And another minor change is that the web SQL support for the Android web view is now deprecated. So WebSQL is a pretty old technology that allows uh, web applications to just store users data in a local database, but that is also not widely supported and therefore also not recommended to use, which is also an indication uh, because of uh, this deprecation. All right, so much about the new Android 15 releases. The last thing I would like to talk about are new Compose releases, specifically for Compose and multi-platform. Because since the last Android news episode, uh, Compose versions 1.6.11 up to 1.70 alpha 2 came out. And these, of course, bring a few new changes. Most of these changes are just bug fixes for very specific scenarios. Like if you scroll to an end of a list at full moon and your phone number ends with a seven or so, then that made your app crash or so. I won't go over these kinds of fixes, but rather about the new features these releases bring. And that's on the one hand, when we use Compose multi-platform for iOS, we now have this uh, floating cursor support. So that is a feature that is um, pretty native to iOS. So I don't think we have that on Android, that if we enter certain text in the text field and we want to move the cursor, then there is a floating cursor so we can really move it in a very smooth way. You will know this if you're using an iPhone. And this feature is now supported by those Compose multi-platform text fields. And another change regarding iOS when using Compose multi-platform is that we can now also change the appearance of the iOS status bar from our Compose multi-platform code. For that, you can use the Compose UI view controller delegate, that's how it's called. And you can use that to decide how the status bar should actually look like, if it should show up at all. So you now have the control inside your Compose multi-platform code. All right, if you actually plan to target Android 15 with your app, then definitely don't miss the next video because I will talk about a scenario where I think a lot of apps will completely break when you target Android 15. But that's it. I'm out. Thanks for watching. Have an amazing rest of your week. I'll see you back in the next video. Bye bye.